an ambassador or a pimp, probably, huh? <laughs> well, look at this fat fellow over here. Now, now, just squeeze together. I know there's only 15 on the bench, but that's all right. And just remember, it's not the drinks that you're paying for. It's the right to hear me sing and to hear me ball. Now, who is that redoubtable bitch complaining up there? Don't you know that my very most famous line is to be blackguarding? Now silence, messieurs. I will sing you a prologue to this play. Silence, messieurs. Bring on. See ballet. A senseless celebration over nothing at all. Hear the blackbirds calling for some raw sienna. Better play much thinner, cause the money's so tight. Hey, but that's alright. You better smear it on real thick. Have another drink quick. Out of Hateful's Bible, gonna drink all day and then we'll drink all night. Some of what I say applies to us today. So don't brand me, don't brand me, no baloney about no time and place. Some things have to happen in an open space, close to home, close to mind, close to my heart. Sometimes I find the answers to the questions that I long to hear. About his bitter end. 
we have the great painter. Toulouse-Lautrec. Now do not be so foolish as to judge a man by his size. <laughs> Life is good. <laughs> Let's drink. Yes. And another. Ah, one must learn to bear oneself. Eh, what? <laughs> <laughs> A uh, moral suicide. One should drink little, of course, but often. <laughs> <laughs> I always intended to go to Japan one day, to the land of the short men where the dwarf trees grow. Mother once offered to pay the fare, but I declined. Now, I declined upon learning how much more I had yet to learn of Montmartre. <laughs> Oh, no, no! I guarantee you, there's no danger to me in drink! <laughs> I'm so close to the ground, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what is Mormont? No. What should it be? Every Mormont, the sacred hill. Mormont, the town of liberty. Mormont, the salt of the earth, the mind and navel of the world. Ah, the granite breast from which the generations are thirst for the ideal and come to refresh themselves. Mormont, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mormont. Welcome to the circus of painters and their art in one ring. We unfold this story. Oh 
troop of Tilly. So he felt his on the canvas with feverish haste. He was seeking the pain. As with the trial, the phenomenon handled till his fingertips were wrong. with the brush. That's to say, cheat! <laughs> After a year, you know less than you did before you came to him. The whole spirit of the place is an insult! <laughs> Quite so, my dear Bernard. Here, I feel a bit sluggish. I find it difficult to make a drawing conscientiously. I'm here to learn my trade, not to let myself be absorbed. <laughs> oh, well, a change of atmosphere would be a delight. Be a change here, wait. goes bum, bum, bum. that's the place that the light comes on up there in the aisle I didn't hear it am I now here yeah let's go back to the beginning of the song go back to the very beginning of that song and just watch me I'll point it to you you do that that build before you do that it's the first time that it gets out of that little trip Jackie you know where it is cure when that comes on I'm bringing this build before yeah you're bringing that up and then you switch that on and then after they come on stage you switch it up Okay. Back to the beginning of the song. Okay. Oriental 
bits to pieces on display, leading to another way of feeling and expression. Such a colorful impression. Tangy has a head of flint. Certainly, she is a good deal more dangerous in this civilization we call about in than some poor soul bitten by a mad dog living in an institute. Tangy! Oh, I would be right a hundred times over to kill that lady, but I won't do it any more than Socrates. And for this reason, I have more in common in long suffering and resignation, anyhow, with the ancient Christian martyrs and slaves than with you present day rotters of Paris. <laughs> but I believe in my painters Pissarro, Cesar, Anquete. Genius is unrecognized, geniuses are, but one day, sooner or later, as if by magic, presto, triumph. Let me look at your paintings. Working hard, Pitangi. I hope to develop something good. It isn't there yet, but I aim at it and struggle for it. I, I want something serious, something fresh, something with soul in it. Forward! Forward, Vincent! But don't forget the story of Icarus, who wanted to fly to the sun and arrived at a certain height, lost his wings and dropped into the sea. And the technique of asphyxiation. Study the Japanese things. You will see a man who is undoubtedly wise, philosophic, intelligent, uh, and how does he spend his time? Uh, by studying the distance between the Earth and the Moon? Ha, ha. By studying the policies of government? No. He studies a single thing. The Japanese indicate the path to follow. What we must seek is a personal, highly colored simplicity. You agree to this? Oh, most assuredly. Now, when you have oil paints and glosses, it's idiotic to paint with maggots and confetti. It's just as Gauguin says. We must restore painting to its source. Okay. Gauguin, he calls himself an impressionist, but in my opinion, he's already advanced beyond it. Gauguin has declared that the future of painting must rest with the man who goes back to the true civilization of the savage. Lands where life is pure and simple, the air models natural and free, the air transparent and colors pure and brilliant. The thought isn't new. It's a favorite topic among the painters of Montmartre. Ah, but how many artists do you know, Vincent, who have actually gone off to one of those fabled, off-discussed lands, huh? Tangy! Ah, the love of art makes one lose real love. Silly. But remember, Vincent. Japonese forever! 
living together like this. I think the most difficult time is over and he will make his own way. Hmm. What a pity that Theo is Vincent's brother. He would have made him such a splendid wife. <laughs> ah well, he is the only art dealer in Paris giving young Peter a chance. He doesn't own the gallery. I should like to be a pig. Man alone would be ridiculous. Once upon a time, the wild animals, the big ones, used to roar. Today, they are stuck. <laughs> Do you uh, like women? Yes. And they're fat and vicious. But their intelligence annoys me. It's too spiritual for me. <laughs> I've always wanted a mistress who is fat, and I've never found one. This does not mean that I am not susceptible to beauty, only that my senses will have none of it. As you perceive, I don't know love. To say I love you would break all my teeth. <laughs> so much to show you that I am anything but a poet. A poet without love. Oh, pity. I have no complaint to make. Like Jesus, I say, the flesh is the flesh, and the spirit the spirit. Thanks to this, a small amount of money satisfies my flesh, and my spirit is left in peace. Ah, don't talk, drink. Well now, what is your story, Hamshot? If I tell you that on my mother's side, I am descended from a Borgia of Aragon, Viceroy of Peru. You will say that it isn't true. I'm giving myself air. Quite so. What if I tell you that this family is a family of scavengers? You will despise me. If I tell you that on my father's side, they're all called Gauguin. Yeah. You'll say that this is absolutely childish. If I explain myself on the matter with the idea of convincing you that I am not a bastard, <laughs> you will smile skeptically. The best thing would be to hold my tongue to hold one's tongue when one is full of a desire to talk. Uh, you're on, Gauguin. Where are we going? Oh, any place you like. Uh, the choice that is yours. <laughs> Anywhere but bed. Who one gets in bed with is no light matter. Ah, I have the perfect spot. The Cafe Tambourine. simple Japanese teachers who live in nature as though they themselves were flowers. You can't study Japanese art, it seems to me, without becoming much happy. We must return to nature in spite of our education and our work in a world of tradition. Mm, your sermon smacks of Gauguin's philosophy, my dear Vincent. Ah, oh, Gauguin and his interminable dreams of the erotic. Oh, excuse me, my dear, I meant to say the exotic. My dreams aren't always exactly spiritual, but it's a rest after the labors of art to let one's mind play, and one's body too. Besides, it preserves you from the boring austerity and vile hypocrisy that make people so evil. Ah, the technique of uh, the theology. My dreams solve many questions my understanding dares not approach. Suddenly I am on earth and in the midst of strange animals. I see beings that might well be men, though they resemble us but slightly. 
Without fear, I approach. They look at me vaguely without surprise. Beside them, a monkey would seem by far the superior. <clears throat> Drawing a piece of money from my pocket, I give it to one of them. It's the most intelligent thing I can think to do at the moment. He grasps it, carries it to his mouth, then without anger, throws it away. Has he thought? I dare not hope so. Now and then raucous sounds issue from his mouth as from a cavern. And in my dream, an angel with white wings comes smiling toward me. Behind her, an old man holding in his hand an hourglass. Useless to question me. I understand your thought. You must know that these beings were men, as you were once, before God began to create you. Ask this old man to lead you into infinity, and you will see what God wishes to do with you, and learn that you today are far from completion. What would the work of the Creator be if it were all done in a day? God never rests. The old man vanishes and I awakening, raising my eyes heavenward. See the angel with white wings mounting toward the stars. Her long hair leaves in the firmament, as it were, a trail of light. Nail up some indecency over your door, in plain sight. From that day forward, you will be rid of all respectable people. <laughs> the most insupportable folk that God has created. <laughs> Vincent paints like a madman. And you're an appalling barbarian, Morgana Savage. And you, sensational Cezanne, or a dauber, an aging dauber, or dabber, should you prefer. I at least have found my own style, my original sensation. Oh, if Cezanne finds the recipe for condensing the exaggerated expressions of his sensations into a single unique procedure, Please try to make him talk in his sleep by administering one of those mysterious homeopathic drugs. <laughs> so he'll tell us all about it. <laughs> See? The technique of hallucination. I know you've been trying to steal my little sensations from me and filch my subjects' isolation. That's what I deserve. It's the only way to protect personal technique from renegades. With a woman who feels pleasure. <laughs> I feel twice as much pleasure. <laughs> Painter, uh, painters are brutes! Precisely, Mademoiselle Valadon, absolutely oh. right. And you're right, my dear Cezanne. Vincent is also right about his simple Japanese. Decidedly, the savage is better than we are. You're not mistaken when you say I am a savage. It's true, Cezanne, I am a savage. And civilized people sense it, because in my work, there is nothing that surprises or baffles except this savage in spite of me. That's why it can't be imitated. There are the work of a man is the explanation of that man. There are two kinds of beauty. The one that comes from instinct, the other from study. Clearly the combination of both with the modifications this involves creates a great and very complicated richness, which it is the duty of the art critic to busy himself in detecting. You are an art critic today, Cezanne. Allow me not to guide you, but to advise you to open your eyes on what I've just told you a little mysteriously. Art has been going through a long period of insanity. Artists having lost all their savageness, having no more instinct, are wandering in every direction, searching for productive elements which they hadn't the strength to create. In consequence, they no longer act except in disorderly mobs, becoming timid like lost souls the moment they're alone. That's why it's not possible to advise solitude for everyone, Cezanne. Because one must be strong enough to endure it and to work alone. However awkward painting may be, however hateful in the times we're living in, I say anyone who has chosen it is a man of duty, sound and faithful. Yeah, amen, Street. Sound and faithful. <laughs> the technique of contradiction. Oh, how original. It's as Pierre Tangue explains. <laughs> the artist studies a single blade of grass but that blade of grass leads him to draw all the plants, then the seasons, then the wide aspects of the countryside, then animals, then human figures. And so he leads his life. And life is too short to accomplish all that. <laughs> when sailors have to move a heavy load or raise an anchor and make a tremendous effort, they all sing together to, give, to keep them up and give them them. That's just what artists like. You know, I think the society of impressionists would be a good thing. 
think it could come into existence. The artists would agree, mutually among themselves, each consenting to give a considerable number of paintings to the society. And that the gain, as well as the losses, should be taken in common. I should not ask anything better. But when it's a question of several painters living in community life, I stipulate before everything that there must be a boss to keep order, and that would naturally be Gauguin. We'll call ourselves the Petite Boulevard Group. Just to distinguish us from the Grand Boulevard Group, no doubt. <laughs> Manet, Degas, Cicely, ha! Dinosaurs. Mark this well, a wind is blowing at this time among artists that is all in our favor. I firmly believe in the possibility of an immense renaissance of art. The time's ripe for an exhibition of our work. Now call us decadence. Uh, we are decadence. No, the art that we're working in, we feel it has a long future before it. And one must have some settled base, like steady people, not like decadence. Where will we exhibit? Here in the Cafe Tambourine. Afterwards, in the bordello. Well, they have a better client. <laughs> <laughs> Pierre Tanguy will hang our paintings. Take them to him this evening. By tomorrow, our exhibition at the Petit Boulevard Group will be arranged. Early customers will be greeted by the light of our own canvases. Ah. Oh, César! You can ask for sorrow if I'm not talented. In one piece of advice. With no constipation, a regular coitus, a man can live through anything. <laughs> 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 oh, oh Toulouse! Yeah. Got your cake. Oh, my button book, my button book. Oh, oh! The technique of mortification! <laughs> what matters if I alienate? To the multitude, I shall be an enigma. To a few, I shall be a point. And sooner or later, merit will have its way. We must make up our minds to put up with one another and arrive holding each other's hand. People make the same mistake. Well, this being the case, what's to be done? Must I consider myself a dangerous man? every means possible to put my passions to good use. For years now, I, I don't know exactly how long I've been more or less without employment, wandering here and there. It's true that occasionally I've earned my crust of bread, occasionally a friend has given it to me in charity. I've lived as I could, as luck would have it, 
haphazard. It's true that I've lost confidence in many. It's true that my financial situation is in more than a sad state. It's true that the future is only too gloomy. It's true that I could have done better. It's true that I've lost, lost time in terms of earning my bread. It's true that even my studies are in a sad and hopeless condition, but I must continue on the path I've taken now. For if I don't do anything, if I don't study, if I don't go on seeking any longer, then I'm lost. Woe is me. That's how I look at it. Continue. Continue. Follow me. Follow me. Wait. Wait. That's what's necessary. What is your definite aim, Vincent? An artist's work and his private life are like a woman in childbirth and her baby. You may look at her baby, but you may not lift your chemise to see if it's bloodstained. So I'm only asking in hopes of understanding you. My aim becomes more definite and will stand up slowly and surely. Rough draft becomes a sketch. A sketch becomes a picture. By working seriously on it, by pondering over the idea vague at first, over the thought that was fleeting and passing. It's fixed. As molting time is for birds, so adversity or misfortune is the difficult time for us the human beings. One can stay in it in that time of molting. One can also emerge renewed. But anyhow, it must not be done. Oh. And it is not at all amusing. But therefore, the only thing to do is to hide oneself. Ah, well, so be it. Ah, listen to what the critics say about my canvases, eh? Toulouse Latrin may be reproached for taking delight in representing trivial gaiety, coarse amusements, and low subjects. He appears to be insensible to beauty of feature, elegance of form, or grace of movement. Now, it is true that he paints with a loving brush, being ill-formed, stumpy, and repulsive in their ugliness. But of what good is such perversion? You mean to tell me that's a pedigree dog? Just look at its dull coat and crooked paws. What a miserable brute. Just because it has a lovely face. Of course it's a pedigree dog with markings like that. You do not know what you're talking about. Well, am I not correct, Monsieur Toulouse, in saying that a dog may be ugly and yet have a good pedigree? Oh, you're talking to the right man. Welcome <laughs> to the cult of ugliness. <laughs> Manet and Degas, they've already arrived. They sell paintings. Exhibit our work in your gallery, Theo. I don't own the gallery, Vince. Well, then quit the gallery and start your own gallery. It's, it's impossible. <laughs> ah! My home life is almost unbearable. I wish you'd go and live someplace else. Oh, and he talks of it sometimes, but if I were to it suggested he would at once give up the idea. 
All I ask is that he leave me alone, but that's the very thing he never does. <laughs> and I can hardly stand it. serve some in. He is well aware that there's something for him to do. But he cannot do it. What is it? He cannot quite rip it. And then some vague ideas occur to him. He says to himself, the others build their nests, lay their eggs, raise their little ones. And he knocks his head against the bars of the cage. But the cage remains. And the bird is back in my anguish. Look at that lazy animal, says another bird passing. He seems to be living a life of ease, yes. Prisoner lives. He does not die. There are no outward signs of what passes within him. His health is good. He is more or less happy when the sun shines. But then the season of migration comes. And attacks of melancholy. But he has everything he wants. Say the little children that tend him in his cage. And he looks through the bars at the overcast sky where a thunderstorm is gathering. And inwardly he rebels against his fate. I'm caged. I am caged! And you tell me I don't want anything, fools! You tell me that I have everything I need! Oh. I beseech your liberty that I might be a bird. the other. Well, he's his own worst enemy. He not only makes life hard for others, <laughs> oh, but for himself. One cannot always tell what it is that shuts us in, confines us, seems to bury us. Nevertheless, one feels certain barriers, certain gates, certain walls. all this imagination, fantasy. Ah, don't.
on asses. I did rightly to help him all these years. Well, I've often been on the point of telling them he must fend for himself. <laughs> Had he been anything but a painter, I should have done so long ago. Dutchman? No thanks. 
Besides, the man can scarcely paint. <laughs> Silly circus play. Ah, the technique of introduction. Charming as ever, my dear Aristide. Well, they are a lot of idiots. They don't even know why I sing to them. They can't understand. So I take my revenge on them by treating them worse than dogs. <laughs> then they laugh. They laugh till the tears roll down their cheeks. They think I'm joking. But it's the horrors I've seen. And it's all the thoughts of the past that make me sing the way I do. Silence! Please. in the sun Rivers of sweat run together at the base of his throat The plunging line down his breast Across his chest like rivers on the run Vincent painting in the sun and go somewhere to rest Drinking lots of absinthe to calm his nerves As he struggles with the words to a letter for a friend <laughs> Indeed a friend is what old Vincent needs right now But he doesn't know how so he paints his life away in this little night cafe. James, are you out there? Yeah. Come even further down. Come all the way down to the corner of this platform. Just work your way down there. And how are these people here? Are they standing now? They're, no, they're seated. <laughs> <laughs> stay seated. Stay seated. That looks good. <laughs> how is that? That looks good. OK, so we're just going on the all right? Bob looks especially nice. <laughs> the night is so alive, more richly colored. 
That's why I spend almost every night of my life in a little night cafe. And all the sudden summer evenings with the faces all aglow. All the people sit in the sip and chat beneath the trees. They flow into the evening. you a hundred times already. Uh, and my wife and my son. Even your baby. Even my babies, even my babies. I'm homesick, Roulon. I miss Theo. I miss my friends in Montmartre. Emile Bernard. All right, Rousseau. Toulouse, Latre. Vincent Van Gogh. George Seurat. Sensational Cezanne. And last but not least, Paul Gauguin. Paul Gauguin. Oh, go guy. Be good guy, go guy. Don't make fun of my pal. He's a good old pal. Crazy, but a good old pal. A real artist. Compared to him, my artistic ideas are vulgar, gross, and beastly. Ah, a poetic. No. He's a poet. Poet Paul, poet Paul. <laughs> Come here. Go can? Here in Arnhem? He'll go better he cooked up in a place like Arnhem. There's only one problem. Oh no, he'll love it. <laughs> the colors, the brilliant light. The Mistral. The Mistral. 
What's that? Webs that whip folks into a frenzy. I've seen them uproot windmills and suck up all the waters from the road in one great mouthful. We'll harness them, Mr. We'll paint it together. You'll spit in the bull's eye. Go away, Rudolph. I have to think. I'll rent the yellow house. It will become our home, the studio. A home for all our artist friends. It will be the beginning of a sort of colony. Crazy colony, a colony of crazies. Get out, Rudolph, out! My whole mind is on Gorgana. My dear, okay. I must tell you that even at work, I don't cease thinking about starting a studio with you and I as permanent residents. A shelter and refuge for our pals when they're knocked out in the struck. No, 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 not that. But how can I say? I'll paint it. This is just another song that was written on another day. Never mind the mood I'm in, never mind the misty gray. It's just the field outside. Shut my mouth. Every time I think of you, I got to somehow sing it out to the world outside. So it's justified. Maybe that's a poor excuse, but I got nothing to lose but my life. And maybe you grow tired of these things, but I'll paint and I'll sing. Never once will I think of it twice.
Well, where the hell is the welcome committee? Oh, at your disposal, Gauguin. An entire cafe full of night crawlers. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a good place to ruin oneself. Oh, go mad. Don't commit a crime. Where is Vincent? Ah, the sure Roland, Mr. Stupid. Where? Hey! <laughs> hey, Roland! What? What's that? You know a crazy Dutchman named Vincent? Vincent? An orange-headed guy, Payer. Can you direct me to him? Why, you're Vincent's pal. I recognize you. Vincent said you would be here soon, and here you are. Poet Paul, the good god Gauguin. <laughs> Boo. I arrived at Arles toward the end of the night and waited for dawn in the little all-night cafe. A portrait of myself that I had sent to uh, Vincent explains Roland's exclamation. Neither too early nor too late, I went to rouse Vincent out. Vincent! Vincent! Go on, go on. <laughs> go on. <laughs> You came! <laughs> Yellow. Everything's yellow. It's the light. What's going on here? The light. Sun, you light. Yellow light. Moonlight. Starlight. Light. This color box is a mess. Tubes crowded together, unclosed. Still, something shines from your canvas. It's the light bulb. We'll paint it together. We'll do heaps of good things. This, this is your room. It's like a damn boudoir. <laughs> this chair, especially for you. My throne. For the painter of the future, the new poet of these parts. Now, as to money. Oh, uh, Theo will send money. In turn, return, we send him canvases. Simple enough. I suggest we keep all our cash in a box, virtuously writing down all our expenses. So much for tobacco and absinthe, so much for rent, so much for hygienic excursions at night. Jake, Nocturnal promenades for the reasons of uh, hygiene. Women, man, women. Your head's as thick as tape, that's it. With Gauguin, blood and sex prevails over ambition. Always. The food tops my list at the moment. You're hungry? I have soup. I made soup. You made soup? For four days, I've lived on a loaf of bread and 23 cups of coffee. <laughs> so you thought it was time for some soup. So I made some. Looks like paint. <laughs> Tastes like paint. How did you mix this? With brushes. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. I can't eat this slop. Come on, let's go to the cafe. Well, Let's do some painting first. Paint later. I must tell you, Vincent, I have never had the mental facility that others find without any trouble at the tips of their brushes. I can't just jump off a train, pick up my palette, and turn you out of sunlight effect at once. Come on, let's eat. Then you can show me some women. Women of all in the long shawls falling in folds to the streets where the primitive speed tax a man.
might happen again. And I might lose control of myself and break your neck. So permit me to write your brother and tell him I'm coming back. Oh, please, Paul, you've only just arrived. Please. Oh. Dear Theo, I think that Gargan is a little out of sorts with the good town of Arl, the little yellow house where we work, especially with me. As a matter of fact, there are bound to be grave difficulties to overcome here for him as well as me. These difficulties are more within ourselves than outside. Gargan is very powerful strongly created, but just because of that, he must have peace. Will he find it anywhere if he doesn't find it here? I'm waiting for him to make a decision with absolute serenity. A good handshake. It's My dear Bernard, I am at Arles, quite out of my element. So petty and shabby do I find the scenery and the people. Vincent and I do not find ourselves in general agreement. He admires Daumier, Daubigny, Diem, and the great Rousseau, all people I cannot endure. On the other hand, he detests Anger, Raphael, Degas, all people whom I admire. I answer, Corporal, you're right for the sake of peace. He is a romantic, while I am rather inclined towards a primitive state. When it comes to color, he is interested in the accidents of the pigment, as with Monticelli, whereas I detest this messing about in the medium. Affectionate hand clasp, Vincent sends you his regards and asks me to thank you for the study you sent him in exchange. Signed, Paul Gauguin. Touch me in my sleep. I remain. 
No, there'll never be an asshole quite like you. <laughs> Can't enjoy an imbecile, goddamn! Who cares about some whore you screwed in the head? Oh. With all these yellows and violets, you accomplish nothing but the mildest of incomplete and monotonous harmonies. The sound of the harp is missing in them. I'm not working for the sound of the harp. I want something clear with simplicity, something as simple as the Japanese. Corporal, you're right. Take care not to step on the foot of a learned idiot. This bite is incurable. Go get it! Sit down and shut up and paint, for Christ's sake. I'm trying to do your portrait. Again, dreams. Yes, it seems that he's painting an island scene about brown skin on a windy beach. to your comrade, monsieur. I don't know. You know very well. He's dead. He's not dead. Get him upstairs. We can explain ourselves there. Was I negligent on this occasion? Should I have disarmed him and tried to calm him? 
I've often questioned my conscience on this matter. But I've never found anything to reproach myself with. Let him who will fling the stone at me. Be kind enough, monsieur, to await this man with great care. And if he asks for me, tell him I've left for Paris. The sight of me might prove fatal to him. How fine he is, and he amuses me. I have a silver gray hen with ruffled plumage. She scratches, she pecks. She destroys my flowers, it makes no difference. She is droll without being prudish. The cock makes a sign to her with his wings and feet, and she immediately offers her rump. Oh, it's quickly over. Fortune favorable? I don't know. The children laugh. I laugh. Mon Dieu, what idiocy. I am so poor I have nothing to put in my pot. If I eat the cock, it would be too tough. The hen, then? But in that case, I can no longer amuse myself. Watching my cock with the purple wings golden neck and the black tail. I am on top of my hen. So I'm still hungry. Drags on, drags on, drags on, drags on. 
else do we come? I need to go back to the, the, the ear cutting off thing. This won't take long. The ear cutting off thing. Uh, the ear cutting off thing. When you're up there. Can you go back to that point, Linda? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I need to do this for the live the ear cut when people come out. Anybody who's not involved in that space, then, uh, then that's why. Oh, man. Yeah, man. it's working real good. <laughs> this is just a section that we can't work when they're. Can just a few, just a few mistakes, yeah. just mistakes, and getting the wrong thing on. You know, nothing that can be solved. <laughs> okay, so uh, Gauguin, come on down here. Let, let her get set up. Oh, yeah, just. She changed her mind. Just a second. We'll, we'll get there in just a second. Are you ready? If she doesn't have time, she could have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So come on down and do guard this object carefully. Because if she doesn't, I just thought she could. Okay. Guard this object carefully. Okay. You scream. Go on. 
Dr. Ray, Dr. Ray. Dr. Ray. He's changed your religion. Mm -hmm. Okay, just, yeah, let's just mark through it. Okay, Dr. Ray, Dr. Ray, what have you done to your friend? No, she was fine. She was correct. No, this is just her phenomenon. I don't know. No, she was correct. The only two people that were wrong were Paula and Ray. Yeah. Get him up the stairs. We're going to explain ourselves. Get him up the stairs, okay? I know. I was back making my words back there. Okay, at this point, this light down here needs to go away. Okay, then you say your line. Hmm? Uh, was oh, I was negligent on fine. this occasion. Okay, hold it a second. These are not, these are not insurmountable things at all. It's just, it's not building things. No, no. Okay. I can't remember. Okay, then uh, was I negligent on this occasion? Then he crosses up there. What is your line when you go up there? Um, let him who will fling the stone at me. That's correct. Okay, and at that point, then the general center needs to go out. Fling the stone at me. The general center goes goes out. Scarves. Out. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Let her write it down. Okay. Now go on. Kind enough, be sure to awaken this man with great care. And if he asks for me, tell him I have left for Paris. The side of me might prove fatal to him. Okay, and at that point, don't you bring Toulouse in? He should. Okay, everything stays the same. No, no, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for him to meet. I'm waiting for those two to meet before Toulouse enters. Yeah, they meet. Okay, they meet. And Toulouse, there's just a little in. pause. You exit. Okay, go say your line. Uh, technique of extraction. We all know where Do your little business. just leads us. Thy knife can be plucking out, or rather, in this case, like that's what's in store for all of us. Okay, then that goes out. Right, that's what's in store for all of us. Okay, that goes out. Bruce. Bruce, please, just for a minute. Considerable loss of blood. Okay, do your exit. Already all her people seven. Say your line so she can hear it. Uh, being uh, considerable loss of blood and artery was severed, being uh, impressionable accounts of the attack he had. Uh, I've seen Maddie, a madman, in similar circumstances, fairly quiet and able to work afterwards. Okay. At that point, everything goes down except for Theo up there. I mean, except for Vincent. Okay, uh, just a second. You, are you clear where that happens? James's last line was it simply an artist's event. Is that what our last year? No. no. Uh, uh, James's like last line, store that's store what's in store for all of us. That's the last line. That's James's last line. Oh, yeah. And you've still got all this up here? She hasn't got to change the lines. Mm -hmm. That was to lose his line. Oh, line before, but the doctor says that. Yeah, um, that's what's in store for all of us, is your cue to take Toulouse out. That's what the deal was. Okay. Janet's sticking up behind somewhere. big, large one. Yes, it's in there, right? So is that clear? I think we all need to give a big hand to Lyndon Newman. Doing a fine job. Okay, everybody, uh, before you get out of costumes, I just want to see everybody just for a minute. Tomorrow, there's a few things we have to say tonight that are important.
thing that's important is he's a very good chef. He really is he's a very good chef. He's got a ways to go, but it's very, very good. Um, what did you need to say tonight? Well, I'd, I'd really like to get everybody down here before we talk. Who are we missing? Not down here. Just come now. Just drop it and come down. Goggins, uh, I wanted to ask you, are your pants falling down for a reason? I noticed you were doing this all the way through the second half. Okay, is there a way you can work that out yourself? Yeah. Okay. Like a little wave. Slides tomorrow night too. It's the dimmer machine that has broken each night. That is what has caused us having. Technical hassle. Is everybody out now? Who is that? Is that Serena? Somebody was still. There. There's still someone oh, up like there. They were in their underwear. So. Wednesday, isn't it? Yep. That's right. I think this is everybody. So it's like everybody. Okay, just listen. Dan has some things to say. Well, what what is the plan tomorrow night? Oh, well, the plan tomorrow night is that uh, uh, we need to have notes at seven o'clock. That'll take probably about thirty to forty minutes. Uh, for notes, we need to have uh, some real good notes. Everybody should be here assembled down here and then there'll be plenty of time for you to get into costume and makeup tomorrow night for a full dress rehearsal at that time okay part of the notes that i would like to do tomorrow after doug is finished with acting type notes is to go from the beginning of the show to the end with you all holding your uh running orders in your hands and to tell us the points in the evening that uh were problematic costume wise because obviously there were quite a few we caught a lot of them uh, now but I know that there were other things that we may have missed I also have many notes to give you about the costumes about things that were incorrect or that uh, uh, scenes that you literally missed some of you weren't even there but I think you already know all these things but I just would like to reiterate them so that tomorrow night it'll be it, we have to have this kind of night with this much costuming so that tomorrow night will be much smoother and probably almost perfect. But there's no way not to have a night like this. So do not be, do not be dismayed about the costume experience and the changes and so forth. Don't let it hassle you because tomorrow night will be much smoother so that what you're thinking about is the play and not the costume change, okay? So I know that that was frantic. I know there were a lot of moments backstage where it was you know, problematic, but we all found that out, and this is what we're going to do and make the changes and make the things work well tomorrow night and smooth. Yeah, and if there are anything that are wrong with a costume such as like tonight, if you ripped anything or damaged anything, let Deanne or Janet know tonight so that they can be miraculously fixed by <laughs> tomorrow in the minimal length of time that's available. If you also feel there's something that you're so concerned about that you don't want to wait till tomorrow night to talk about it, that tonight is a good night to talk about it. Can I say something? Uh-huh. Coming off this backstage here, we can't tell where the ends are. People have slipped off. Of right. We're going to have uh, the, the lighting on the whole perimeter of the okay, theater so is that, going to be changed. And then right off the back, there's two pieces of plywood laid down where we can walk across. Right. And I, I think half the people stripped over it all day. Yeah. Just remove them, just to go to the ground. Maybe just go to the ground. Nail to the ground. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we'll make your access back there lit and available tomorrow. Is it possible to put some grades on those things and heels or slip shoes? Grades on what? On the ramps? 
or just even just some wood slats yes. put down there or something to okay. catch our teeth. Yeah, okay. What else? Anything that, that, that we need to do tomorrow? A light. Yeah, there's going to be yeah, light, we'll light all around the entire here, perimeter. Then, since that's a problem. Other than that, are there anything that, that we need to know about as, as to the To correct in the ship? daytime tomorrow. Yes, the one that, yeah, that, that, that's, yeah, that, that, that will be, be there. Yeah, that will be done. <laughs> yeah, it's still the farmhouse. Uh, what, it was lit tonight, wasn't it? At the very end of the ramp is where they changed. Okay, up here is where it doesn't need to be lit. We need to just move those lights yeah, all the way back. Yeah. up there. Those two lights, we'll use those same ones, just move them back that way. Right. Yeah, yeah okay, we'll do that tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow, yeah. Uh, what else? Anything that, that needs to be dealt with? Yes. I have, I have one question. I'm a little confused. I was going to ask your opinion on the cafe scene where, you know, rovers out here and someone's making this little thing, you know, they're frozen. The coin thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we turn around. Do we just react? You were saying that we just react with our body or just we're replacing the one and watch, watch the coin go over and freeze the Oh, I'm still, yeah, we're still confused as to when we're supposed to turn our heads to. I approach. I, I approach them. Without fear. Caught, well, without says, fear, fear I, approach. I approach. Look. Oh. And then when Grover starts doing his thing, just watch that. And then, then the next thing is the coin. And then he ignores it. You look away or whatever. What is the line that? He just, hit the coin drops. Yeah, the coin drops. Away. You return to your original position. Any other major questions? Um, when we come in for that final pose where we take on Vincent, we pose, is it, uh, it was a confusion of what when we come in. I think people were coming in early the way it was originally said. I mean, we, were, we were out there for Yellow House, and that we weren't there No, before. you're supposed to start coming on them. This is just another way of passing on a point of view. This is where people way. start to end. Uh, yeah, there were a few people that were coming in early. I have that in notes that I'll give tomorrow. Okay. I have about eight, nine pages of notes that I have. I've got one question about that. Per per -tangue. That when, when the song begins, there's no light on us. Well, we've been doing all that, that uh, conversation and action. We seem to be absolutely still. No, we went over this the other. We went over this the other day, Senator. It was a. Uh, uh, you do that thing. The light goes down. And then you just go to your position. There's a light down here. Dick comes in. Right. Then Dick comes out here. Only then does the light come up on you. And that's when we start. That's when you start doing whatever. Yeah. I've been carrying on business. Well, if you carry on business in the dark, nobody will see it, so don't worry about it. Uh, also, I will have the art books here tomorrow night. And if you can even come a little earlier than 7 to look at them to perhaps get some ideas about your makeup. It is not ordinary street makeup. It needs to be something beyond a little eyeshadow and some cheeks. It's got to be as dramatic as the paintings that we see out here and as the artwork. You know, we need to, and, and if it's too much, we can pull you back. But tomorrow night, I would like to see some things, real interesting things done with your faces. I think there's some pretty interesting faces here. Right? Yeah, yeah. John, I want to tell everybody, um, everybody listen. Um, if everybody would check their costumes and make sure everything's there because I've been picking up pieces all night. And <laughs> if I find them, that's fine, but I don't, I don't know what to look for. Really, look after your own shit. If it's laying, I don't mind picking up, but I don't know if something's put special. So don't think I should pick it up if it's part of your costume. And if it's there, I'll pick it up, but I may not see it, so please check. I think we also need to thank oh, Kenneth Michael. Yeah! That's Rick's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sad. He just got one. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get more than one hand. Jen and Barbara. Jen and Barbara. Jen and Barbara. Jen and Barbara. And all the extra Is that really Rick's? So, uh, Rick's. anything that a, won't keep to until notes tomorrow night, think about it carefully because it's important if something needs to be 
fixed or, or thought about that, it, that we have to work on tomorrow? The, the workers tomorrow to come out to work. Whatever we need to do, we need to know, okay? Other than that, then tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, uh, and it, just go ahead and come on down because I'll have a bunch of notes, and, I, and whenever anybody's here, I'll start giving you notes. So don't just hang around and visit. Come right down into here, and uh, and I'll give you whatever notes that I have for you individually. Okay? Yeah, you can help me. It's coming along. It's still got a ways to go, but... It, it will be all right, I think. When you all put your costumes away, I want you to check each of your costumes to be sure that they are there. That is your responsibility. That's when you're going to be here, then that's where it happens. All right, seven. Okay. I'll just bring it I get I need to get I need to get hold of body cone because he's the one that knows the electronics of Okay. Uh, it's a matter of we need to call him right now. Or Rosalind needs to be. I tried to change my hair. Uh, mm -hmm. Was we that need okay? Mike and Bass. Did it up and down yes. and back? Yes. Is, uh, yes. is that all right? Yes. You're about worked. to see Mike learn. Yes. But did it work? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I tried to change it almost he, every time. Gig, I went. Yeah. Get off tonight. Okay, thank you. I don't have a makeup box. But when you finish, okay, will you see him? Will you wake up when he gets home? I just want to write him a note. Tell him to call me whenever he gets home. Uh, so we can work out tomorrow. He's got to come and look at this box. That sounds good. Uh, do you need the projectors on? You want to see makeup? We own one. I put it in for a. Okay. Uh, but I mean, the, the thing is, is if they're all interconnected sure. together, yeah. why don't you give the box to yeah. something now? Oh, Just oh, let, sorry, yeah, yeah no. take the box and, and then uh, give me the old box too. over there and uh, no, no, no. take that to them and leave them a note. Yeah. Say, I'll, I'll bring call me because we've got to have some. Diane. It just burned up. What is it? Burned Rick, come on stage when you're supposed it just to be. Quit oh, your name's in here more than once. Oh, oh shit. Rick, look at this. What does it say? Costume with wrong costume, uh, right? Well, uh, no, two of us stayed on the whole time. The other two didn't. Oh, you're in trouble, pal. I can tell. Oh, can I take the shirt? Or yeah, uh, Ken can, can show you. He knows what. Tell her the indications on okay, what it did. Okay, I can do that. Okay, I'll take the shirt. She's got to take the red shirt. You guys will have cups. I just need you to put on the cups. coat and the pants, Douglas, tonight before you leave. Okay. Uh, Linda, there was one other thing I wanted to go over with you before you split tonight while we have light. Let me get my notes. What, what about the hat that we so talked about yesterday? For the Russo book that you saw, the Saray? Yeah, or I've, I've tried to do that. It doesn't seem to I'll try to act no. or look similar yeah. to him. Okay. I need that. That's like every picture I've seen on him. He's got a seer sucker hat or something like that. Right. I'll well, try to. I'll yeah. try to. I got everything yeah. I'm going. I'll see you later. I hope you okay, know. Well, that's the way it is. Uh, 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 I turned out the jet. I turned out the jet. I turned out the jet. This position. Oh, 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 o